So you just got your Tesla Model S, a brand new one, and you realize you got this little thing stuck on there. So today we're gonna to talk about how to remove that. Before we get into the removal, I wanna talk about why this is on the Model S, but not on the Model X. So when the Model S 2021 was crash tested, it had the license plate holder on. So in order to meet the NHTSA standards, this has to be on the car when you get it delivered. You can remove it, of course. Not all states require the front license plate to be on. Why would you remove it? So when you do like paint protection film, it's a standard practice to remove this so that you don't have to have this ugly line around this and you could just wrap it or because you just don't like the way this looks and honestly, it's not great. So we're gonna go ahead and remove it. And there's three bolts right here. I actually took out the one in the middle. There's three bolts usually that hold it. And this doesn't actually hold it into the body of the car. It actually holds it to a bracket. So once you get the measurement of the bolt right here, all you have to do is go into this hole and lock that up. And once you lock it up, you can see that I can start spinning it. Then I can start loosening it. This is honestly like the perfect size because it doesn't touch, if you are gonna reuse it, it doesn't actually touch like the license plate holder. But same thing here. And again, there's three of these. And once you remove those three screws, this literally just comes out. You can put that aside and you are left with this bracket. So this, again, is not actually on by any sort of bolt or anything like, thank God, right? So there's actually like massive adhesives underneath. But what we need to do is we need to heat it. We could actually use a heat gun like this, but part of this is it doesn't really go inside and it's really hard to heat underneath it. This doesn't go through to that, right? So this is a very long process, but what I like to do is I like you to use very, very hot water. You could either get like, not quite boiling water, but pretty hot. Um, and then just like soak this area, that adhesive side. So I have this really cool sprayer and really try to soak it in that area. And heat is really good because it will loosen up a lot of this a lot better. So once you get in this area, you can really try to warm it up a little bit here. Great. I'm just going to use this tool, make sure you're not on the paint, to kind of dislodge that a little bit. Some thick stuff, guys. Okay. So if you have a steamer, you can actually use it. This is just sprayer, I mean, it's just hot water. Um, you don't want it like boi boiling because you are going to burn your hand. But it's pretty warm where it's going to be able to kind of loosen up that adhesive or you can just slowly kind of work your way. I'm going to go ahead and meet in the middle a little bit. See if I can dislodge this section right here. Be careful. I mean, this is a bumper, so it's going to bend a little bit. But don't be too afraid about that. That's all part of it. So once you get a good, I guess, being able to put like about a finger in there, uh, we can use like the fishing line and start working our way here. The only part about this process that's difficult is that it's a very, very thick. There's two massive double-sided tape, so it can be incredibly difficult to, and you might need a lot of fishing line. And be careful when you're doing this. So just kind of go back and forth. Okay, so I'm about halfway dislodged now. I'm gonna continue to douse it with water to really continue loosening it up and this will make it easier for you to kind of go through that, okay? We're gonna go ahead and use the fishing line technique again. Kind of just move up and down. Okay, so at this point, I'm pretty much have it all dislodged, but this is pretty much the end. So you can see I can use 
that hot water. And I like dousing it a little bit more because I want this adhesive to remove a lot easier. Okay. And then at this point, you want to make sure you remove the adhesive. What I'd like to do first, because this is such a massive one, massive adhesives, that I try to remove it as much as I can with my hands without having to use like the eraser tool, right? And again, that water helps a lot because that actually makes it a lot more easier and you're kind of loosening up that adhesive in that area. And it's really, really helpful. So using hot water is gonna be your best friend. So what I appreciate about this adhesive though, I know it's a pain to remove, but honestly, they're using high quality, I'm sure 3M tape. So it relatively comes out pretty clean. If they use some really cheap adhesive stuff, this would suck like 10 times. Last stretch, guys. So before I do anything, I'm just gonna try to see if I can get rid of some of this residue. The reason why I like using waterless is because it has this lubrication and it's a quick detailer. So it kind of glides so it avoids scratching more. I mean, you are scratching in micro levels. I'm just trying to avoid as much as possible. And obviously this isn't ready for polishing because my car is like super dirty right now. But really you want to get it as clean as possible because if you polish and you still have all this adhesive, you're pretty much going to go through your pad a lot more. So once you have it pretty much removed, there are going to be a little bit of line that you'll see. And if you're about to get ready to PPF, you wanna make sure you do your last minute and your clay bar. So in order to do that, you're gonna, if you read here, it says one to eight ratio, just water and, and the prep wash. And you're gonna go ahead and try to get as much out with your microfiber. You can spray onto this area. Just go ahead and get rid of those um, lines and last minute adhesives. And this does a great job of removing all those things. So you can see, just by passing through that, I got rid of most of everything. The next step is we're gonna make sure we clay bar. Again, this is assuming that you wash the car. So if, when you, if you remove that before you wash your car, make sure you wash your car so that you don't have to clay bar and then clay bar the rest of it. And then you're gonna go ahead and really knead this and spray a lot into the clay bar and this, and you're gonna go ahead and just gently, especially that line. And then I could feel all that. and then just clay bar that, okay? And then I'm gonna just feel some areas. There's some paint defect there, that's fine. I mean, that's not fine, but that's not from the license plate. Make sure you're lubricated really well. And then whenever you're doing this process, like I don't have a clean car right now, so don't look over there but you're just trying to grab all those areas that you missed. So once the clay bar process is done, you're gonna rinse it, and now you can lay film on top of it, and you're good to go. Can you put this back on? Absolutely, all you have to do is clean the license plate bracket, and then use a 3M adhesive like this. This is almost the same thing. Lay it where you saw it, and then you just stick it on. And that's pretty much it. It already has that curvature, and then this will work really, really well. Can you put it over PPF? Yes, absolutely. If you really want to reuse this, you can use it as well. Um, just keep in mind, this is an insanely strong adhesive. There's a high chance, especially for wraps, actually 100% chance on wraps, that it will damage the wrap when you remove it. So just be very, very careful about that. Well, hopefully, guys, that helped you remove the license plate. That doesn't look so good on the Tesla Model S. If you have any questions, like always, let us know in the comments below. Click on that subscribe button, and we'll see you later.